Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Bara, and we're doing the last video of this vinyl uh, uh, vinyl collection thing I'm about. And um, we're just gonna get right into it. So, in between number four and this one, I did purchase quite a lot. I mean, round four. Round four uh, vinyls, in which I will about to show you. So, uh, excuse me if I'm out of order of letters in my vinyl collection. It's just that I want to get to you. I want to get. I want to show you guys these records before we close out this uh, video series. Cool, cool. So first off, we have uh, probably one of my favorite music releases this year. I am listening to. I'm trying to catch up to a lot of music releases this year. So, um, but out of all the things that I've listened to, this ha this is up there. Um, maybe maybe even my number one. Uh, to be completely honest with you guys, but um, and I purchased the vinyl cost me a pretty penny, but um, You know, it was like it was an end of semester um, Present for myself, so I thought I'd give it it. So I thought I'd give it myself So this is Aesop Rock's The Impossible Kid. If you guys don't know who Aesop Rock is um, He's from Definitive, Definitive Jux with the likes of Kamuteo uh, LP, Cannibal Ox, those kind of people and he made music. He has been making our uh, rap music Hip hop uh, for the past twenty years now. I think he had a he had a couple. Of, he had like this is ninth studio album. I keep forgetting. He collaborated with a lot of people with the likes of San Homeboy Homeboy Sandman LP, a uh, very long time collaborator. Open Mike Eagle on his new album as well. Um, had a personal uh, film festival with Paul White. Uh, he collaborated that in a song. And yeah, Aesop Rock is dope as hell. I mean, he's so alienated and he's so. Interesting the way he twists his rhyme, twists his syllables, twists his symbolism, uh, twists his metaphors, and so on and so forth. The way this guy's, the way this guy raps really should be, you know, I think um, people th these days should really uh, pay attention to this kind of rap, just to, you know, not not necessarily oh this is the real hip hop kind of thing. No, um, it's something that you guys should check it out. Just, you know just to see how creative some artists really are and this is one of the most creative artists that I really that I really genuinely th think in the rap scene so this packaging is really dope as hell so it comes in a, this uh, poster so this is the cover I'm not gonna show you the whole thing because it is huge it is a 21 panel one yeah so I'm just gonna show you like that um be in uh, can I show you guys Oh, uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I am not going to do that. Um, yeah, last time I did, um, it was very hard to close and hard to open. Uh, all you need to know in the, on the back is pink, and it has a lot of... Uh, it has a uh, lyric... Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, liner notes. I'll link you guys, like, a, an offic official opening, a box opening on this final. Uh, but uh, not on this video. But it does come with two dope... Uh, double LP sleeves here. I love his artworks as well because it's so weird and it's so um, not necessarily dark. It's just so eccentric in its own way, in its own uh, qu quirky way. So um, we have the first vinyl here. This is on neon green, and the second vinyl is on shit, so it's on neon uh, pink. Favorite, I have a lot of favorite tracks on this album. Um, we have Rings, a lot of years, a lot of years is, <laughs> a lot of years is funny as hell. I love that, I love that track. Um, and, uh, Dorks, Supercell, Blood Sandwich, uh, Get Out the Car, Strong, Strong is a really dope uh, track. Tough, uh, Defender, yeah, a lot of, a lot of dope, a lot of dope tracks here. You guys should give this a listen. This is definitely one of them. This is definitely my favorite releases of 2016 so far. Um, you know, you know, I'm trying to find something that will top this off, but well, maybe there's a couple of albums that I'm considering of knocking off uh, this this magnificent album here. But at the moment, nah, nothing, nothing really beats this. I've been listening to this repeatedly for the past months, so I'm uh, gonna stick to that. Moving on, we have one of my favorite. We have one of my favorite albums of all time, and I mentioned this album when I did when I show you guys my Beach Boys Pet Sounds and how Beach uh, Pet Sounds, Meteora, and the third album, which I'm going to show you, 
really helped me through some interesting times in my life. Um, just, yeah. So I am going to show you what I'm talking about. The Cure's Disintegration. I have a lot of stories to tell you about this, but I will tell you this much. When I first, I was recommended this to a, by a YouTuber, and I won't, and um, he said that, oh yeah, this is one of the albums that got me through a lot of stuff. And you know, sometimes I feel mellow, and I do want to try things out just to match, you know, match my somberness, not match, match my sorrow in a, in a way. So I looked it up, I listened to it for, I listened to um, the first track, Plain Song. Wasn't feeling it, to be honest. So I was really worried. So, so what's so great about this album? Then Pictures of You hit. When Pictures of You hit, and I read the lyrics, I was near in tears when I heard this. Because it was so heart-touching. It was so beautiful to listen to. Oh man, pictures of you almost had me in tears, dudes. Um, dudes and dudettes, hey guys. Um, but yeah, pictures of you, man. And then we have Close Down. Love Song is also the one that I almost cried. Last Dance. Lullaby, I didn't relate to it, but it was an interesting track. Um, the imagery it conjures up in that track is very interesting. So that was pretty cool as well. Um, Disintegration, Homesick, Un Untitled, Untitled, almost had me in tears. I was sobbing, guys. I was near in tears listening to this. So we have a gatefold here, Robertson was looking fresh as hell. And then on each uh, side, this is a double LP. Ooh. This is a reissue, by the way, so sorry about that. Uh, this album was first uh, was released in 1989, but I got the reissued version. I think this is the 2012, no 2010 reissued. So yeah, and we have the lot. We have the lyrics in the back here. I've been staring so long at these pictures of you. Damn, dude, that song hit me hard. Hit me hard, man. Hit me hard. So, and then we have another one here. The vinyl is typical of um, black vinyl, so I'm not gonna show you every nook and cranny of it because it's practically just similar. Okay, I'm gonna put that back. Okay, so the Cure disintegration. If you're looking for some art, art rock, listen to the Cure. If you're trying to find your some music that will match your sorrow in in you know in the events that you've had, um, disintegration is recommended. Oops, sorry, my phone. Disintegration is recommended. It is. Uh, this album was a in tears, guys. Beach Boys, uh, Pet Sounds as well. And yeah, dude. What can I say, man? Okay. Now, I'm gonna... So we're gonna move on. No, we have one more. We have one more that I could show you. And this is for my one from one of my favorite bands of all time. This is their first, uh, this is their debut record and it's a classic as well. Um, I'm talking about the, the new metal, the first, one of the first new metal bands, Rage Against the Machine, their first album, Rage Against the Machine, self-titled. Mm. Zach De La Rocha is insane. He is great. Tom, Tom, uh, Zach De La Rocha actually, I, I, if you've seen my Run the Jewels 2, um, uh, showcasing in number four, I think. I said that Zach De La Rocha was in, you know, Close Your Eyes and Talk Kind of Fuck, and, you know, this is his band, guys, if you guys don't know. Why would you not know? But, um, yeah. Great, great album here. This is, this is up there with Meteora and, um, in terms of new metal. This is, um, up there with, uh, Meteora and System of a Down's, uh, Toxicity. Cause those, cause I love those two albums to death. But this is, yeah, it, this one's pretty up there, guys. Sorry again about my phone. Um, the sleeves is tight as well. We have lyrics here. Um, oh, I just noticed this is the oil. 
Oh, this is the oil, this is the oil casket for the protest. Did not realize that for the monk burning. And we have uh, the band there. Um, so that, Zach Delo Richard collaborated with Rondo Jewels, Killer Mark and LP. Tom Morello actually collaborated with Lincoln Park and Hunting Party in the track Drawbar. Sadly, it was in the. It was actually one of the weaker, the weakest track on the album because all he had, all he did was just twiddle on the guitar, which is, I mean, it does add atmosphere, but it didn't feel like a Tom Morello feature. And it sounds like anybody could do it, and people, and you know, it doesn't really need to have like a feature, because like anybody, it sounds like anybody could do it. So yeah, favorite track here. We have, I have, I like Bomb Track, Killing in the Name is Classic, Take the Power Back, uh, Bullet in the Head, Know Your Enemy, Fistful of Steel. Great tracks, guys. Great, 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 great tracks. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking to get into new metal, this is another great starting point. Toxicity, System of a Dance, Toxicity, Linkin Park, Meteora, Rage Against the Machine, Rage Against the Machine is great as well. So, we'll move on. Okay, these few tracks, I'm just gonna talk in a gauntlet. Uh, these next uh, vinyls, I'm just gonna talk, talk in a gauntlet because these are just cheap uh, vinyls that I got. And, you know, it looks pretty. So, what if, you know, those kind of feelings like, oh, it's three bucks, looks nice. Uh, I might just buy it. Uh, first of all, it's Steve Forbear's, uh, Steve Forbert? I don't know how to spell it. I thought, I'm assuming he's French. Um, Steve Forbert's uh, Jackrabbit Slim. Just some old school uh, 80s pop. Nothing too big about it. I do, I do get a kick on listening to this. So yeah, and the cover is fresh as hell. Come on. So um, yeah, um, I won't class, classify this as country. I know this is like pop rock, like old pop rock. Anyway, moving on, uh, we have uh, ups and downs, uh, Snoop Dogg, and also Bang Out on the other side. Um, my funny enough, funny story. My friend got this to me because I was in a hassle. I wasn't in a hassle. Sorry. Um, I owed him money, quite quite a bit of money, because he paid for a vinyl, and I had to drive from the other side of uh, Jakarta to give it to him. So as a reward, and because it was traf, it was like huge traffic as well. So my friend just like, yo, dude, I'm so sorry, and he gave me uh, Steam Dogs, uh, sing, uh, 12 inch, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, some good West Coast hip hop here. G Funk. Oh, um, Souls of Mischief. I looked it up, and actually, I didn't really look it up if I really pay attention. Souls of Mischief is actually from West Coast, from Oakland. So you got you guys now. You guys know where they are. You know hieroglyphics and all. Nine eighty seven. Let's party. The only reason I got this is because there was ACDC and um, Paul McCartney as well, and Beach Boys. Oh, it's not Paul McCartney. Oh, there's Paul McCartney. Beach Boys, ACDC. Yeah, that's the only reason why I got this. And it was like three bucks, so why not? Hey guys, when it's cheap vinyl, it's cheap vinyl. You, you just can't go wrong with it. Next up, I have um, 20 fabulous, fabulous, fabulous hits of the 60s. Um, I'm a huge six, uh, 60s era fan. So when this came in, I was just like, I have to get this. We got Everly Brothers here. We got um, the, the theme from uh, Summer Palace, which is great as well. So yeah, just great 60s compilation here. Nothing too special. So those are like just a quick rundown of the th of vinyls that I got, you know, for cheap, for a cheap price. And we're gonna move on. Okay, we're gonna we're doing the last three records here, and we have one of my favorite rock albums, the nerdiest band I know, and the nerdiest album that I know as well. Oh, next. Of the second album, but um, yeah, Weezer's Blue Album. Um, this is their first album, and I just I actually grew up on Weezer. Um, I grew up on like single uh, singles like Say It Ain't So, um, Buddy Holly, Undone the Soda Song. I think I've heard My Name Is Jonas somewhere before, but yeah, this is just. The reason why I love Weezer so much is how nerdy, how geeky, and how introverted the lyrics are. And sometimes I can relate to that. And Rivers Cuomo makes great lyrics here. Um, I know that they had a, they have a new record called The White Album out. 
this year, but I'm, I've yet to listen to it because um, I need to at least listen to three albums first, then I could, sorry, jump to the White Album. And I know that in the middle they went a bit too commercial with, you know, with albums such as Red Album. But, um, yeah, this is just fantastic. Um, you know, this, al this album cover makes me laugh every time because Rupert's Cuomo here looks like a 14-year-old virgin. Look at that. He's so, he looks so young. This album came in 1994. Uh, I don't know when this was reissued. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, I'm 100% sure this was reissued. Because there's, I don't think there is. Yeah, anyway. So I'm gonna open it up for you guys. Um, so it comes in a sleeve. I'm not gonna show you the vinyl, because the vinyl is really simple. So this is the sleeves here. It's pretty sweet as well. It's sweet as hail. And then I'm gonna put it back in. Um, favorite tracks. My name is uh, no one else. My name is Jonas is tight as well, but I just prefer my name. No one else. The world has turned and left me here. Great. Buddy Holly, class classic. I love that song to death. Undone the sweater song. So Wax America. See then so. In the garage and only in dreams. <laughs> How kind of sad that those two tracks are. Really makes me laugh sometimes. But I shouldn't laugh. But it's a pretty sad track. In a in a weird, just quirky, introverted way that I love about the Weezer. I just love about the Weezer. And it's just great, man. So we're gonna move on here. The last two records, guys. We're almost there. We're almost there. And this, and we have to go with the one, the only debut record of the East Coast phenomenon, Legends. Wu Tang Clans, enter the Wu Tang. Thirty. Enter Wu Tang. Enter the Wu Tang. Ugh. Enter the Wu Tang. Thirty six chambers. If you, if you're a hip hop dude. And you haven't listened to this, where have you been? Well, then again, I haven't listened to Trap Call Quest, but, you know, we should have. But still, guys, enter the Wu-Tang 36 Chambers. This is, like, classic. <sighs> classic, 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 classic. Great. And, yeah, the most baffling thing about me, about this, um, this group, especially in this album as well, is how... There are nine MCs in the Wu-Tang Clan, and they know, and when you hear it, you can almost tell which one is which, not only by the voice, by the lyrical content, by the flow, and how the, and, and the intensity, and, how the, and the delivery of all their verses. Man, Jezza, Reza, Inspector Deck, ODB, You God, Ghostface Killer, Method Man. Uh, I, I know I'm missing some dudes. I'm so sorry. I can't think of the top of my head. Damn, man. Raekwon. Oh, so, I'm sorry. Raekwon. This is just great. Favorite tracks. Bring the Ruckus. Shame on an N-word. Clan. Uh, can it all be so simple? Protect your neck. The mystery of chess boxing. That's my favorite, favorite track. Woodside Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. Cream. Method Man. Dude. This, this whole album is classic, man. Great, great album. Highly, highly recommended if you're a, if you're a huge hip-hop fan. And you haven't listened to this, of course. And my last record, before we cl uh, to close this out, is actually another Wu-Tang album. Particularly, this is not the greatest Wu-Tang album in the world, mainly because of how disjointed um, the chemistry between the MCs and the production uh, the Reza took on this era of Wu-Tang. Uh, but it was but it was still um, interesting to see how they blended uh, these two worlds between you know just how uh, hardy East Coast to indie indie hip hop. No, yeah, you can you can say it's indie. You can say it's indie hip hop. No, 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 no quotations. Um, just underground hip hop as a whole. But yeah, Wu Tang, Wu uh, Wu Tang, Wu Tang meets the indie culture, Volume One. One of the main reasons I actually bought this it was. Um, there was a feature here, 
uh, there was a uh, Dildo Funky Homo Sapien. Aesop Rock. Aesop Rock is in here. Ari the Rugged Man is also here, which is awesome. And none other than MF Doom with Reza. I mean, I was curious as hell, and I listened to a couple of their songs. I was like, oh, this is tight. I'm gonna buy. I'm buy. I'm buying the, you know, I'm buying the album, uh, the record. So I bought it. So yeah, it comes in a really cool, clear pink vinyl. It's a double LP. And yeah, this is a, this is actually one of the first records I bought as well. It was. Uh, I remember this. Uh, it was. It was on a school day, and it, the school had a had a weird. Not a weird, it had an event and we were just, me and my friends just too lazy, was like, you know what, just skip it. <laughs> Don't skip school, kids. But, um, we did and me and my friend went to the record shop, record, sh record shop and then we just bought a couple of records. I bought Neutral Milk Hotels, uh, Indie Airplane of this, Over the Sea and Wu-Tang Clan's, uh, Wu-Tang Clan meets the Indie Culture Volume 1. There is a Volume 2, I've yet to listen to that, but Volume 1 is... It's okay. I mean, yeah, it is a bit disjointed because you know Reza's production style and Reza's production style and the MCs kind of change. In that he's a bit more. He's not. He's n not like so simple. It's East Coast feeling anymore. It's he's more adventurous. But I think the the delivery and the product delivery is a bit disjointed. So it felt awkward listening to it. But yeah, this is not. This is. Honestly, not a bad album, guys. It was it's an okay album. So yeah, Wu Tang Clan. So that is my vinyl collection. I do have um, seven inches, but I don't know if I'm gonna do that anytime soon. There are some seven inch, uh, seven, some forty five seven inches that I want to talk to you about that I have a very funny story on, but not on this video because this video is only twelve inch only. So thank you for watching. Uh, and I'll see if I could get more videos out um, now that this series is done. Um, but yeah, so thank you for watching this video. And yeah, have a good day, good night, good evening, wherever the hell you are. And this is 90 Degrees signing out. Peace.